Hi, Gordo here. I'm with Simon Wood. Uh, we've been uh, watching him cook today because he's been putting together um, the, the new stuff for his restaurant called Wood. Uh, it's going to be on First Street, which is the new area of Manchester. It's getting pretty cool. It's nice to see that some quality brands are going in there, to be frank. Simon is quoted by Tarot, I think, on the MasterChef as being the best talent they've had on there. I think you were there in 2015, is that right? right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a great accolade there. It's not his first go at after MasterChef, but actually running a fairly uh, big kitchen. It's at Oldham Football Club, is that right? Yeah, yeah, we do a couple of things there. I've got the boardroom restaurant, which yeah. is only a pop up, but it gives me the foundation to do my food my way. Yeah. And then obviously I look after the match day catering, look after some weddings, players' diets, yeah. nutrition, all kinds of things we've done. So it's been a really good springboard for me at the club, but now it's time to really go out and enter into the city centre and the world of fine dining, which is always where I've wanted to be. Okay. So when you say fine dining, um, tell me uh, your favourite main course you've got on the menu currently. My favourite? Yeah? yeah, my favourite at the minute on the a la carte is the beef with burnt onion and truffle. Yeah. Um, it's got a fantastic truffle Madeira sauce, split sauce with some chives through it. We've got tr uh, truffle, burnt onion puree. and. Um, it's just a really good dish. Mm. You know, I, I noticed on the start of remember this um, the pigeon on there. Yeah. Where did you get your pigeon from to start with? Uh, Jack Wood. Jack Wood? Yeah. Well, I do My Jack. father's namesake. <laughs> right, that's fair enough. <laughs> and how do you like your pigeon? Uh, pink. Yeah? yeah pink. What, you, what are you putting with it? What flavours? Roasted on the crown. Yeah. Pink, loads of butter, got some Madeira sauce. Um, Slip with some Pedro Jimenez, some Frise, some MD, which has been caramelised with a bit of sugar so the sweetness balances out, yeah. bitterness. And figs, some Iranian figs soaked in Pedro Jimenez again. Yeah. It's nice. Well, I look forward to eating it. Uh, it's one of my favourite dishes, to be fair. You've chosen a couple of villains to work with you on that. Yeah. yeah, an old sparring partner of mine is over there somewhere hiding. I don't know where he's. Oh, he's there, Mr. Jennings. Uh, of course, we have Mr. Cunningham in front of house, who is arguably uh, the best front of house in Greater Manchester. After speaking to both Mike and James, and might I add, Aaron and Ben, yeah, uh, restaurant manager and, and senior sous chef. Um, the, the caliber that these guys have got, you can rattle off a list of places, Northcote, Bohemia, Gary Rhodes, Michael Keynes, Manchester House, you know, Rabbit in the Moon, everywhere. You know, the knowledge that these guys have got and why I've put them in place within my team, because that's experience that money literally can't buy. And I'm not one of these people that knows it all. I'll never pretend to, yeah. and that's the same as these guys here, and they're all sat watching now. And you know that they know that they don't know it all. Yeah, they know a lot, but they're always willing to learn and do different things. And obviously, that's why they bought into my brand and doing things the way I think mm -hmm. we should set off. And we're, we're building a brand together from the start. So the quality's there. There's no doubt. Um, the menus are there. All we need now is the facility, and we'll hit the ground running. Okay. I was saying before that uh, Mike Jennings, who's, who used to have Grenache, which was uh, a remarkably good restaurant to be fair, um, I have uh, sucked his plums before, they were very nice. It's interesting that your um, background before you went to MasterChef really was something completely different, wasn't it? Yeah, I worked in data science for a university. Right. Why me? It's a bit changing. <laughs> yes. The GPs are on point though. <laughs> well, I've got to say, one of the problems I, I find with most chefs who uh, start their own restaurants so, is they can't count um, the, the big problem. So you say you, you're doing a five-day service. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that sometimes, not everywhere, but sometimes when I go out as a diner in Manchester, I think it's missing, and that's consistency. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's because there's a lot of chefs that are doing ridiculous hours they lose the passion for the job. As for the front of house guys, to, to walk around smiling and being the very best that you can be, uh, no one in any job can do that mm. seven days a week. It doesn't matter what you're doing. 
whether you're working in a restaurant or you're being a, a bin man, you, yeah. you're not going to work seven days a week and put a smile on your face every time. So I think that the five day operation, with the quality, they know that they have to give their all for those five days. It's it's a balance, uh, and one that I believe will give us the, every chance. Okay. What's your bar like? Um, we've got a sophisticated lounge and bar area. Um, we'll be utilising the Josper that we've got, given every opportunity. I want people to come in and um, have a nice glass of wine after work, just a pint. Yeah. Uh, maybe something from the grill, nice small plates, quick, in and out, sit in the sun, there isn't it. You know, enjoy yourself, relax and let your hair down, get some, some nibbles, we've got some pork belly on there, we've got some spice wings, um, we've got the usual olives. Going back to the MasterChef experience, how did you get to get there in the first instance? I'm fascinated to know, you, you, you have to write in 6,000 times, or tell me about it. Um, well, first and foremost, I've always watched it. Um, yeah. Even the junior one from being a kid, the Lloyd Grossman years, the, the MasterChef goes large. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then obviously every year since, and I've been one of those people, like I'm sure there's many people watching this out that's shouting at the TV and the rest of it. Yeah. So anyway, life, took me in a direction where I wasn't content, I guess. And I lost the temper one morning, about seven o'clock in the office, and MasterChef was in my cookies. Um, and I was looking at Facebook or whatever it was. And I applied for the first time. Yeah. Now your first application is a written application, mm -hmm. um, followed by, I think it's three telephone interviews of various lengths, right. like long, not small ones, long, comprehensive interviews. And yeah. um, if you get through that, then you'll be invited to a hotel uh, or another facility where you go and you plate a dish up on camera. The yeah. researchers and producers will be there, they'll ask you questions, you plate your dish up, you talk them through it, you taste it. Uh, and then after that, um, you know, you find out if you've got through. I think there was more in it this year. When I got through, there was 40 got through to the, to the kitchen. Um, and I think there's around 10,000 apply, so it's 10,000 to one shot. Wow, wow, that's pretty impressive. What do you think um, put you in the frame? <laughs> it's it's hard to say um, <laughs> cool. without coming across. Like, I just thought I, I had I had a lot of good days when I was there. Yeah, I think I'm good at what I do. I have to believe that. Yeah. When I looked at what I cooked that first day in the, day in the kitchen. Thought it was better than everybody else's. So did they. They put me through without having to cook off again, so yeah. I wasn't far off. What do you think was your best dish? Best dish. I think it was one that I made up, which incidentally inspired the blind tasting menu that we're doing. Yeah. And that was at a place called Gastrologic in Sweden. What they cook on the day is what arrives at the harbour, what they've got in pickles because yeah. of the temperature. Um, you know, what they grow themselves, what they forage. Yeah. And I cooked a dish there. Um, I cooked halibut for the first time. Um, I did it with some leeks that yeah. I'd cooked in sugar and butter. Um, there was leek embers on there. And then they also made a, a, a pickle fennel. Um, it's a Swedish pickling method, which is three, two, one. So you do three water, two sugar, mm -hmm. and one vinegar, bring it to the boil, take it off. But substituting the sugar, with um, the sap from a, a tar tree, um, which gives it a smoky sweetness. Yeah. Um, a dish I made up completely on the spot. It's yeah. a dish that's in the book. It's a dish that's been in the boardroom. It's a dish that's on the menu at Wood. Yeah. I've tweaked the fish, I've tweaked the garnish. It's got some chicken skin on there. Um, it, it covers sweet, savory, bitter, salty. You've got the umami from the fish and the butter. It's, it's a, it's probably my most balanced dish, I think, and it's one that is dear to me, so that's probably my best dish I did on the show. Okay, cool. We were researching um, Simon earlier, and one of the comments on the BBC site is uh, that um, Simon is expert on plating. Is there anything you'd like to add to that? Come and find out at the restaurant <laughs> Tuesday to Saturday. <laughs> Okay, listen, great stuff. Thank you very much.